Hi students, welcome back with a new session. Today's topic of discussion is complex numbers. But before we give a formal definition of complex numbers, let's discuss a little bit about the history of complex numbers. So we will discuss the set of numbers that existed before the introduction of complex numbers. Earlier mathematicians used natural numbers for counting things. So these were the earliest known numbers in history and they are called natural numbers. So we will see that in all the systems that existed before complex numbers had some limitations or shortcomings. For example, so natural numbers didn't have any negative numbers and zero. So with the introduction of zero and negative numbers, we got a new set of numbers. So this set of numbers, which is called the set of integers. And again, in the set of integers, we didn't have any fractional numbers. So with the introduction of fractions, we got a new set of numbers again, which is called the set of rational numbers. So these are rational numbers. So all rational numbers are the numbers which can be written in fractional form, but later on, some numbers were discovered which could not be expressed in the form of fractions like this. The numbers like pi, square root 5, square root 7, square root 11. So these are the numbers which cannot be expressed in the form of fractions. So these are called irrational numbers. So if we combine all these system of numbers, we got a new set of numbers, which is called the set of real numbers. So so the set of real numbers is pretty much a complete set of numbers, which fills all the gaps that existed in the previous set of numbers. So from now on, we will see any number that we write in our daily problem solving or any number that we can think of is some kind of a real number. For example, negative 8, negative 10 by 3, square root of 5, pi and so on. So all these numbers are real numbers. So real numbers can be represented by a diagram like this. So this is a one dimensional diagram. So this is a one dimensional known as the number line. So a number line is a one dimensional representation of real numbers. So the set of real numbers is a one dimensional number system. But as we saw in the previous set of numbers, there were some shortcomings and limitations. So now the question arises, does the set of real numbers have any limitation or shortcoming? What do you think the answer could be? Yes, the set of real numbers does have a limitation. The problem in the real number is that we don't have a real number whose square gives us a negative number. So, so what is the solution of this equation? So, so we are going to solve this equation in real numbers and let's see what the solution of this equation is going to be. So we 
solve for x and we get x equals plus minus square root of negative 1. So now, so now does this number exist in real numbers square root of negative 1? No. So no such number exists in real numbers. So this equation does not have a solution in the set of real numbers. So to overcome this problem, mathematicians introduce the concept of imaginary numbers. So mathematicians called this number an imaginary number. represented by i. So, i equals square root of negative 1. So, this is a number whose square is equal to negative 1. And this is called a unit imaginary number. So, the solution of this equation x square plus 1 equals 0 is x equals plus minus i, so which is an imaginary number. Now let us give a formal definition of an imaginary number. So an imaginary number is a number which can be expressed in terms of the square root of a negative number. So a number which can be expressed in terms of the square root of a negative number. For example, so square root of negative 5, square root of negative 10, square root of negative 7. So all these are imaginary numbers. So an imaginary number always gives a negative number when it is squared. So now we will see how these imaginary numbers can be expressed in terms of the unit imaginary number which is i. So we can express, so we can express all these imaginary numbers in terms of i by using the laws of thirds. For example, negative square root 5 can be written as 5 times square 5 times negative 1 which can be written by the law of thirds as square root of 5 times square root of negative 1. And we know that this number square root of negative 1 is the unit imaginary number which is expressed by i. So we can write it as square root of 5 times i since i equals square root of negative 1. Similarly, negative square root of negative 10 can be expressed as square root of 10 i and square root of negative 7 is square root of 7 i. So all the imaginary numbers are some kind of multiples of the unit imaginary number i. So they are as you can see here, so square root 5 is a real number square root 10 is a real number, square root 7 is a real number. So all the imaginary numbers can be expressed as the real multiples of i. So all, so the general form of, a, of an imaginary number is yi, 
where y is a real number pi equals square root of negative 1 and i square equals negative 1. So, we have seen that an imaginary number is a number which can be expressed in terms of square root of a negative number and it always results in a negative number when squared. So, all these numbers square root 5 i, square root 10 i and square root 7 i they result in a negative number when we square them. For example, if we square this number square root 7 i we get 7 i square which is equal to 7 times negative 1 which is negative 7 because i square is equal to negative 1. So, the square of this imaginary number is negative 7 which is a negative number. So, an imaginary number always is expressed in terms of square root of a negative number and results in a negative number when squared. Now, let us do some sample questions based on imaginary numbers. So, we have some questions, we have some imaginary numbers and we have to express them in their simplest form. For example, square root of negative 144. So, we can express it in the form 144 times negative 1, then using the law of thirds, we can take the square root separately in the product. So, square root of 144 is 12 and square root of negative 1 is i. So, this is 12 i. So, negative 144, negative 144 in its simplified form is 12 i. Now, we have to simplify 5 i square plus 3 i to the power 8. So, we will simplify it using the formula i squared equals negative 1. All the higher powers of i can be simplified using this formula. So, we can write it as minus 5 times negative 1 because i square is negative 1. So, plus 3 times. Now, we have to express i to the power 8 in terms of i square. So, we can do this as i squared to the power 4. So, which simplifies to minus 5 times negative 1 plus 3 times negative 1 to the power 4 because again here i squared is equal to negative 1 which simplifies to 5 plus 3 which is 8. So, minus 5 i square plus 3 i to the power 8 simplifies to 8. Let us have another example. Solve the equation 4 x squared plus 7 is equal to 0. We first solve for x. So, 4 x squared is equal to negative 7. So, we divide both sides by 4 to get x squared equals minus 7 over 4. 
if we take square root on both sides we get x equals so which can be expressed as plus minus negative square root of 7 over 2 and here we can express square root of negative 7 is square root of 7 i over 2. So, we can see that the solution of this equations are imaginary numbers. This equation does not have any solution in the set of real numbers, but it does in the set of imaginary numbers. Dear students, so far we have been interpreting real numbers and imaginary numbers as two different number systems. Now we will combine them into a single number system which we call the system of complex numbers. So now we will give a formal definition of a complex number. So a complex number basically is the combination of a real number and an imaginary number. So it combines, so it builds a complex of two numbers. Complex, complex means combination. So this is here the term complex does not mean that it is something complicated. So here the word complex means that we are combining, we are making a complex or combination of two things. So we are combining a real number and an imaginary number to form a complex of these two numbers. And we call this combination as a complex number. So a complex number is the combination of of a real number and an imaginary number. So it takes a real number and an imaginary number and combines them in a form of a sum. In general, a complex number, a complex number z can be written in the form x plus y i where x and y are both real numbers. Then we call x as the real part of z and here y is called imaginary part of complex number z. So x is written as a real part of z and y is written as imaginary part of z. So these are some of the notations that we will be dealing with mostly in the study of complex numbers. Dear students, now we are going to give a geometrical interpretation of complex numbers. So as we discussed previously in the case of real numbers, that real numbers can be geometrically represented by a one dimensional diagram which is called a number line. So real numbers are represented by a number line which has 0 in the middle, positive numbers on the right hand side and negative numbers to the left. So the real numbers are expressed as points on the one dimensional real line. So the set of real number is a one dimensional system and every real number can be 
represented by a point on the number line. Similarly, in the case of complex numbers, we will see that complex numbers can be represented geometrically by a two dimensional diagram which consists of two perpendicular axes. So, one is a horizontal axis and the other is a vertical axis. Here the horizontal axis of this diagram represents the real part of complex number and the vertical axis represents the imaginary part of the complex number. <coughs> so, so, if we have a complex number, suppose we have a complex number 2 plus 3i. So, how can we represent this complex number on this two dimensional diagram? So, we will represent, so we will express 2 on the horizontal axis and 3 on the vertical axis because 2 is the real part of the number and 3 is the vertical part of the number. So, we express it as suppose this is 2 units on the x axis and then 3 units on the y axis we get a point like this. So, so the number so the complex number 2 plus 3i can be expressed in this two dimensional diagram and this two dimensional diagram is called a complex plane. So, it is a plane because it consists of two perpendicular axes. Similarly, we can express any complex number on this complex plane. Similarly, the number minus 4 plus 2i can be represented as so 4 units on the negative x axis, x axis. So, 4 units on the negative x axis and 2 units on the positive y axis. So, we get this point. So, minus 4 plus 2i can be represented by this point on the complex plane. So, similarly we can express any complex number on this plane. So, the system of complex numbers combine real numbers and imaginary numbers in the form of a two dimensional number system. So, now we will see how we can represent a complex number on a diagram called augend diagram. So, as we have already discussed that we can represent complex numbers by a two dimensional diagram which is a complex plane. So, a complex plane consists of two axes a horizontal axis and a vertical axis. So, this horizontal axis is called the real axis and this is called <coughs> imaginary axis. So, now a, any complex number can be represented by a point in this complex plane. For example, the number 3 plus 4 i. So, we have 3 units on the y axis and 4 units on the x axis. So, we get this point 3 plus 4 i. <coughs> so, this point represents the complex number 3 plus 4 i. Now, what an organ diagram does is it connects that point with the origin of this complex plane. So, if we connect this point with the origin by a vector. So, if we connect this point, this complex number with the origin by this vector, suppose the vector OP. 
<coughs> then this vector representation of the complex number inside a complex plane is called an organ diagram. So an organ diagram is the vector representation of a complex number inside a complex plane. Similarly, so we can ask what is the organ diagram of the complex number minus 2 minus 4i. So how can we represent this complex number by an organ diagram on this complex plane. So we have two units on the negative x axis and four units on the negative y axis. So negative two and negative four. So we get this point minus two minus four i. Let's name this point as q. So if we connect this point q with the origin with a vector pointed from origin to the point Q. So we get an organ diagram of the complex number minus 2 minus 4i. So dear students, with this we come to the end of today's lecture. See you in the next session.